Hello everyone, all gooners. Welcome to the KC Show with myself and, and Lee Judges. Judges. Yep, back again. Listen, Lee, it looks like we've upgraded. Well, we must have had a good first well, show. We had a good first show. I've got a table. All right. And the old... And some drop of water. Though. And a drop very, of water. Very, very so, nice. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> right, the first two games since we've uh, had our last show, Lee. Liverpool and Spurs. How do you see... Well, huh. How do you feel about those two performances? Well, in our first shows, we were six points. Since we've done our show, we've only got a point. So it ain't too good, is it? Like, you know, Liverpool, I felt... I, dis I was disappointed in the end, but, you know, I understood Emery's tactics, you know, going up there a little bit defensively, but uh, again, capitulated at the end, if I'll be honest. And, um, yeah, disappointed that we didn't win. But um, can see the reasons. Lee, can I ask you, do you think Emery got the tactics wrong? Because just for the slot, just for a couple of opportunities, if we take the lead, yeah. then people will be probably hailing Unai Emery as a, as a master tactician. I agree. I didn't, I didn't think there's nothing wrong with the tactics. I thought the way we played, uh, I think if you look back on it, Liverpool, yeah, we let Liverpool have the wide areas, but they haven't got a big centre forward that's going to head in there. And I thought Louise was doing well in the first half. We should have been in front. Yeah. I think, you know, Aubameyang and um, Pepe had good chances. And then from a set piece, we're a goal, we're a goal down. We're then a 2 0 down from another a set piece, which is a penalty. So when you look at it, I, They've opened up and destroyed teams. They destroyed us the season before in yeah. open play. They didn't do that in this game. So I think from that point of view, tactically he got it right. It's just that we, which we go on again with the Spurs game, individual mistakes cost us. You know, David Luiz cost us. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the free header, Socrates doesn't jump, you know, because he can't edible, in my <laughs> opinion. You know what I mean? So there you go, which we go on to again. But, so I didn't think it was too wrong. What my problem was, was when we went 2 0 down that Emery didn't change. Didn't it. change it. That, that that would be my only criticism of him on that day is that, you know, we went 2 0 down. Even he could have at 1 0, well, I'll see how it goes for 10 minutes, which, you know, but we're, we're, we're 2 0 down within two minutes of kickoff. So from that point of view, I did feel that he got that wrong, just didn't change it quick enough. You, you know, my, my thoughts on it were going to Liverpool is always going to be a, a, a tough, tough game. We know that. And letting. Robertson and Trent Arnold have a lot of the ball. It works in two ways. It's either they're going to kill you by getting that possession and putting balls in your box, which they didn't do. But sometimes it has that cumulative effect where you're constantly getting balls in your box and you get deeper and deeper and deeper. And then when a corner comes in, which is a different trajectory, we can't deal with it because the big centre halves are up now. Yeah. You know, we're not, the, the defenders ain't dealing with a big striker, but when the two big defenders come up, we couldn't deal with them and they get one, one nil up, which happens. It's a bit disappointing because I would have liked us to go in, you know, at, at nil nil. But you're right. As soon as David Luiz, I think it's more instinct where he's, 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 he's grabbed. Mo Salah shirt. Mo Salah goes down, definite penalty. You're being very generous there, Kevin. Too. No, but it's, it's, it's just his instinct because... In the Burnley game, I thought he was he was he was very good. Yeah. And uh, against Spurs, which we're going to come to, I thought he was fine. I yeah, didn't I think he, he, he didn't really Spurs. put a foot wrong, uh, but his, his defensive partner did, which we're going to cover. Uh, second half, obviously going two down. Then, if you've got any designs of getting anything out of the game, you make changes. Yeah, definitely. And obviously, Sabias against Burnley was playing in a more advanced position. He was kind of playing wide, and. You, the, the wide guys could they couldn't shuffle out to the fullbacks because that would just create more gaps. It seemed like Liverpool had more players on the pitch than us. They had more energy, <clears throat> and uh, again we're going to come to this player probably later in 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 uh, the show. Granite Jack, I thought the game passed him by at Liverpool. I really do. And if if you've got any designs of getting anything at Anfield, you have to match their central midfield. Yeah. You have to match their central midfield because their central midfield ain't the most creative. But one thing they do, they press yeah, you press and hard. they work hard. Big tick in the box for me was uh, Joe Willock. I thought he, he had a storming game and I thought it was unlucky as we're going to get on to the Spurs game now. I thought he was unlucky not to play against Spurs. What's your yeah. thoughts on that? Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I have to say that... Um, 
I, I think like that the trouble with Emery, he, he didn't get the midfield shape right, and I think that causes a few problems because you have to have energy in there, mm. and like, and that's why I said that someone like will has to play because he can get side to side, up and down, and uh, and. I thought out of the three midfield players, Gwendozi, Shaka, and Willock on that day, and Sabias, that Willock was the best player out of the four. I thought he'd done really, really mm-hmm. well. And for a, for a young kid, well pleased. And, and I think, like, you know, he would have been disappointed himself going into the Spurs game not playing. I, I, I would have been. I don't know if you would have well, been. Well, like do, you think it's, do you think it's just easier for Emery to drop him well, that, because that, he's a youngster? That's, that's my problem with Emery. I think, like, big decisions he's not making. But it, it seems very, very easy. You know, Nelson, indifferent, but I'll, we can easily leave him out. You know, um, Willock, out of the side, you know. Uh, Chambers had a fantastic game against Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a young, so I can leave him out because I can't make the bold decisions with the experienced players. Who, by the way, are continually letting him down. Well, there's two in particular um, in that Spurs game, which obviously I know the whole fan base is, is on right now. And um, Socrates for the first goal. I, I, felt, I think we started the game pretty well against Spurs. And, and I've got to say, the stadium and the fans sounded... I mean, I was abroad at the time, but I was listening. And it, it sounded amazing. I was, rang a couple of people at the stadium and it sounded like it was rocking. So the fans played their part. But we keep shooting ourselves in the foot. Sure. I mean, I've watched the game again and I've watched the first goal especially. Granite Xhaka says to Socrates, leave it, I'll go for it. But Socrates gets attracted to the ball. Doesn't win it, Harry Kane flicks it on. Now to Son, now that leaves Louise in a bit of a dilemma because he's got two runners coming. Yeah. So what? So I think Louise backs off, which is the right thing to do. Anyway, so they break through. But I then watch Socrates getting back. And he's getting back and he's watching the ball but he never has a look around him until it was too late. When he saw Ericsson come past him, the shot had already been taken. Leno had already made the save and there was Ericsson to put the ball in, in the back of the net. Never did he recognise the danger and look, I could bail my mate out here because Leno made a save and he could have bailed him out, kick it out for a corner. Yes. You know what <clears> I mean? We, we live to fight again. But he didn't do that. He switched off. And I see this happening too much with, with Socrates. Yeah, well, I said it a couple of weeks ago, I said it. And, and the thing is, Leno has helped out our defenders on more than one occasion. Like, you know, he made a great save about five minutes after that from, from Son. Son. yeah. Absolutely World brilliant. class. And he's done that. So sometimes along the line, you've got to have your, your, your defenders helping out your goalkeeper. And they, and they let him down, Robert, you know. Again? And, uh, Again? Um, um, they let him down, Kevin. And one of the things what. I could have said Robbie there because like, I'm always... Really you always talking to one. Robbie about his <laughs> after game, so, yeah. Like, you know, but like, what, what, uh, if Mustafi Kev would have done that, that pattern of play you've just said about, he would have been crucified. absolutely crucified. Yeah. Like, you know, But because Socrates goes up to the crowd giving it the fists, you know what I mean, after a tackle, we all seem to give him a little bit more of a leeway. Well, I can get on the pitch and give it the old fists. Yeah, you know th- I mean? that's the easy part. That's the easy part. Do your you job. Know what I mean, like, it's, it's about defending and doing your job. Now, as a central defender, I don't, I don't think it's changed too much in, in, in your day when I played or whatever. One of the um, main jobs of a central defender is to win your headers. He does not win the, a majority of his headers, you know. So if he wins that header, which your centre half should do, mm. that's, Leno doesn't have to make the save. Uh, Luis isn't tracking back. It's just, you know, as you said earlier on, which I love that word, stop it from source. Stop it at source. If you win the first ball, they can't they, score. They, they can't score. That's for sure. Yeah. But the way I see it, from, from my point of view as a pro, I want the centre half and the midfielder converging to me. So when I flick it on, exactly. two players are out and now there's a massive gap in the defence. And that's what happened. And that's where Ericsson got through. And that's where Socrates, if he never went, because you could read it, you could see, actually, I don't need to go and win that game because I could pick up the second ball. But he didn't do that. He got attracted to the ball. Yeah. And he's supposed to be an experienced defender. Uh, exactly. So we can't keep making these mistakes. No. And then we're going to get onto our man, Granite Shack. Look, I, I don't like digging him out, but we have to talk about what's happened. Yeah. Yeah. One nil down at the Emirates. 
not feeling too great about ourselves because we weren't playing well at that time. And then the ball gets played into Son. And I couldn't believe what I was watching, seeing Granit Xhaka come sliding in and he just took him out. I don't know what's going through his mind, but he keeps making these kind of mistakes that actually cost us. Well, he hasn't learned from the bright one, you know no. what I mean? Which, uh, which cost know, us a Champions League spot, in honest, a sense. It did, yeah. In a sense, it did, you know? And then to do that, at that moment in time, you know, I have to say, I'm not going to stick up for him because I don't think there's no way you can do like, you know, but I think because of the way our midfield shape was of the three in there, I just think that he was running, 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 getting nowhere near it, frustration or whatever, I don't know. But he just wasn't in the game, Kev, wasn't in the game. And his contribution to the game was to give them a penalty. Yeah. And, and you know, this is your captain, this is your leader, or supposedly, and he's just not doing, not, not contributing enough. Now, you know, we've, I think everybody, there are there are sides of his game that I do like, you know, his passing range and all that. It, it got better when Sabias come on, mm -hmm. I have to say that. Like, there was a better balance, wasn't it? was a better balance. So if, you, if you're going to, and this is where I go, on, go into Emery, if you're going to play different systems and different midfield, get the right personnel yeah. to play that role. Now, I don't think that the three that, that he played there... Started. Started, mm -hmm. was the right personnel because, you know, Granit Xhaka couldn't do that role. You know, I have to say that, you know, Torreira, if I'll be honest, he, he, you know, he'd be loving that Granit Xhaka played in that game because he got, he's got a free ride because he was awful as well. Yeah. He was absolutely awful. He's do you, do you think we missed a trick? Because not playing Torreira in those previous games and then starting him in such a game like Spurs, he's, he hasn't really got the match. No, he didn't look fit. I'm going to defend him because I don't think he did look fit. Yeah, so again, my argument was... Start him at Anfield, even if you played him 45 minutes. At least he's got some some, some minutes in his legs to then go into the derby game. Yeah. But not to play him and then knowing, I need my terrier in there. But the terrier really didn't have much teeth because he hadn't. it was his first game. No, that's no. what I thought anyway. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, this is another thing that's worrying me about Emery, you know. Look, at you go back to Spurs last season. Mm -hmm. He he took off, uh, Gwendozi and... Um, Torreira at a half each, if yes. you remember rightly, yeah. like, you know, and he doesn't seem to be making those sort of bold substitutions no more. I feel that because of the way he is at the moment, he seems very, very cautious about about not losing these sort of games. You know, come on, we're at home. You know, I we're, thought it's the Arsenal, yeah. About, yeah, we're Arsenal. Lee, let, let's be honest now. It's the Arsenal. It's yeah. not just Arsenal. It's the Arsenal, and we're at home. Yeah, and we're supposed to be. Taking the game to the opposition. Exactly, and that's that. This is this is my problem with it. You know, people have said, "Oh, we really played the three up front," which he did, and I give him credit which for that. Which he's supposed to which do. Which he's supposed to do because we're at home. He then played seven defensive-minded players behind that at home. Now, do that at Liverpool. I ain't got a problem with yeah. that. Like, you know, yeah. and get it right and get the right personnel on, on, in there. I ain't got a problem. But at home, you know, three three players are ISO. And what makes it worse, Kev, is that every time they got the ball. You know, it was like they had, they were running through. They had the gaps in the midfield were like, like that. they were just running, just running straight by. And we've got three defensive, seven defensive midfield. But every time Spurs got the ball, I don't, I don't know who who was there and who's not. Every time that Spurs got the ball, you felt like they was going to break score. the scores, get a shot on at the goalkeeper. Yeah. And we've got seven defensive minded, minded players. players. Yeah. So what is what is wrong? What is what is going on? You know, what I mean, and, and so there are you, you cannot. It's, it's great that, uh, you know, well, not great, but if the fans want to criticise Shaka, I get that. Mm -hmm. But the manager has also got to come under criticism for allowing him to play in the first place. Mm -hmm. and, and the system that we're playing with the players is not suitable. Uh, it's, it's, it, to me, it just seems as though it's unbalanced. Yeah. It's unbalanced in the centre of the pitch. I've got to say, I, I didn't have Matteo Guendouzi playing the game. No, I didn't as well. I didn't have him so down. Give, give him every credit for that one. Well, like, you know? but I've got to say, he was the standout player on, on, yeah. on Sunday for me. And that ball, if, if one of the so-called fancier players in the Premier League or world football had played that ball for uh, Aubameyang to score, they, it would have been up in lights. Yeah. The fact of the matter is this young kid is 20 years old. He's on in his second season at Arsenal. And he took the game by the scruff of the neck, especially when Sabias came on, because now he's yeah. got somebody who... They have to account for some another person, 
And to pick Aubameyang out with that ball, I thought was fantastic. We could have won it. Yeah. We could have won it. We didn't. What's your thoughts on even just Kalashnikov? Sh- I know, look, he's offside, but <clears throat> it's you've played, I've played. Being that wide player, knowing you, as long as you stay on side. Yeah, he should have seen it, shouldn't he? He should have seen it. And you know what? I know managers who would take you uh, off. <laughs> you would take you off if you you got done like you, that. You've been coached, I've been coached, like, and that always uh, look along the line. You know what I mean? No excuses if you're looking along the line. You know, this is a professional footballer playing for the, 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 the Arsenal. The Arsenal. The yeah. mighty Arsenal, right? And he's not looking along the line, you know? But we, we make excuses for these players, you know? And it, it, it wasn't that far offside, but listen, it, nothing to do with VAR. The linesman put his flag up and, and it was it offside. Was given. It was given. And, um, but that, that's how close we was to winning the game. Listen, you can be negative about things and all that, like, you know, but from, from the, the realism things, we're 2 0 down against Tottenham. We, got, we didn't lose. So I'm going to take the positives from that. You know, Emery, I felt, could have probably put Sabias on a little bit earlier, but he didn't. But we. we, we there are signs that the team's battling and doing the right thing. So it's two points dropped, one point gained. Yeah. Why does the, that's this is a fantastic yeah. question. Why does Xhaka make so many errors? I think it's 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 one of two things for me. One is a lack of con- concentration. I think because when you're actually on the pitch, sometimes you, it, it seems to me as if he zones out. Because we've seen him in games concentrate and, and, and be good. But there's also times where it's that little lapse where it's like he's, he's forgotten where he is. That, for that Brighton incident, for yeah. instance, he's, he's tracking the guy. It's not as if the guy's going to go through and score, but he puts his hand on his, his shoulder and the guy goes down and it's like a mental lapse. So it's, 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 for me, he just he, he does things that I can't account for. So it's mental lapse, and I think it's just a, something that's inbuilt because he's been there quite a while now, and he should he should know better. He's yeah. an experienced international player. Yeah. He should know better. One, one, I think, is accountability as well. I don't think that, because he, if he makes these mistakes, the next week he's in. So I don't know. I don't know as a, as a former player if you, if a player can continually making those mistakes. Are, are, are there players that would dig him out or whatever like that? Lee, I tell you this much in. Uh, Arsenal team I've played in. <laughs> Listen, you had to be as much error free as you could because this is all part and parcel of the game. Hey, Lee, you're not doing it. You know, you'd be everyone will be on you. If the me and Wright, when we played, if their striker was getting free ball to feet and all that, we'd be on that defense. Hey, we're getting kicked to hell up here, and he's been able to take the ball down nice and easy, get stuck into him, yeah, yeah. And, and vice versa. They'll be saying, listen, get hold of the ball. You know, fight them, do whatever. This is what being part of a team is. So, is he, is, is Granit Xhaka being held accountable? I don't think he is. As you say, he plays the next game. So, one of your points is the accountability factor. I just think you've got to look at the team and what what is the mindset of the team when people make mistakes? Under George Graham, if you'd made that mistake, you'd yeah. be out. Yeah, and the, the other you'd thing is out. with him, Kev, is it, 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 like in that game yesterday, uh, sorry, on Sunday, four or five times he made fouls where, uh, and with dangerous for them, you know, I mean, like everybody's got their hands on their heads because the crosses are coming yeah. in. And he'd done it, not, he, he'd done it about four or five yeah. times. And, you know, it just seems like, oh, well, it don't really matter because. As you say, he's not going to be dragged off. I'll tell you what, you've done all that, Granny. I'll give you the captaincy next week. You know what I mean? And I think there, there's got to be something. And I think that the players, somewhere along the line, you know, David Louise done it last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and Harry's done it this week. And it just doesn't seem like there's, there's a ruthlessness in that dressing room, which worries me. We're definitely not ruthless enough, I feel. But, you know, part of being ruthless is being good without the ball. And a lot of people don't know that. When you play professional football, being ruthless isn't just about going up the other end and beating teams and scoring goals. It's that ruthless mentality. We're going to score, but we're going to stop you. The top teams have it. We, we're we quite soft in, 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 that, in, in that sense, without the ball. And if, you, if you're not good without the football, 
you ain't going to get to where you need to go. Can I ask a question? In like, um, have we improved without the ball? No. Since in the last year and a half under Emery? No, we haven't improved without the ball because majority of the time we have most of the possession. But you tend to see it against the teams, the better teams. When we play the better teams, they're better than us without the ball. And that shows up. That, that shows up for, against us because they know how to trap us and we don't know how to trap them. We've done a, a great number on Chelsea at the Emirates last season where we played high and we ended up trapping them. Yeah, beat them 2-0. Yeah. yeah, beat them 2-0. But you can see there was the mindset and the mentality was to trap them. I think it was Ramsey played a bit further forward as well and he kept trapping um, that ball getting played into the central midfielder. This is how we have to scheme. And it's all part of the scheme. It's, the work has to be done on the training ground before the weekend's game. And it, sometimes it's monotonous. Sometimes it's hard work. But you're professional footballers. That's what you have to do yeah. to get better. Well, I think with Nicolas Pepe, he's not up and running as, as, as we'd like. Um, I've seen glimpses of what he can do. His final ball has not been quite as good, but he's what is that? His second start second or second start. start? You know, so I think he's a, a long way off of it yet. I think you've got to give him a little bit of time. I think that um, you know, like Thierry Henry, Dennis Burkamp, uh, uh, Robert Perez, yeah. that took about six months to, yeah. before he he becomes a. Free. I think because he's like the price tag that he's got, we're expecting miracles straight away. I've liked what I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. I've liked his movement. I like the way that he's taken on players. What I do like about him is that he scares players, yeah. uh, defenders, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, he can only get better, Kev, as far as I'm concerned. Give him a little bit of time, and I think that he'll come to fruit. I personally think Pepe, he's probably been five out of ten so far, with a little bit of sprinkles of fantastic ability. I'm sure he's... He wants to do it. I'm sure he wants to excel. But it's going to take him a little bit of time yeah. because the English game is so much faster and so much more physical than the French league. We know what he can do. We've seen, we've seen all the videos. We know he can be devastating. But he's got to adjust to the style. He's got to adjust to, to his teammates because he's, he's only, it's only two games he's played. He's only started two yeah. games. So... We need to be a bit more patient with him, I feel, and give him that, that, that time to bed in because I think we're going to have a hell of a player on our hands once he's bedded in yeah, I and, agree. and he's settled. I agree.